So, uh, welcome today. We've got Taro. Taro? Taro? Oh, I'm saying it wrong already. It's perfect. No perfect. Um, who's here today to talk to us about his amazing application he's built, which is called Musical Spinners from Latent Space. So, I thought, quick, maybe Taro can give a quick introduction about yourself. Of course, sure. Yeah, so I'm, my name is Tero Parviainen. I am a programmer hacker from Helsinki, and um, I've been doing basically front-end JavaScript development for the last decade or so, and the last two or so of which I've been concentrating a lot on, on generative systems and AI applications and things like that. I, I work in a company called Creative AI, where we do a lot of this, this kind of work, particularly for visual designers and kind of the visual domain. But then in my free time, I also do a lot of music hacking. So I've been doing lots of generative music experiments in the past two years. And, and particularly in the past 10 months or so, I've been moving into lots of this deep learning uh, technology that's been made available to us in the browser now. So I've been doing maybe five or so experiments now with Magenta, okay. which is, which is uh, yeah powering also the demo we're going to talk about today. So, awesome. So this is the, the demo as it exists on the AIJS Rocks website. So I've just opened up, in fact, I'm going to open up fresh um, mm -hmm. from here. So let's open that up. And so here we go. So yeah, what's it doing now? Fetching seed data, musical, yeah, what, what is this stuff? Right, so right now it's loading essentially a whole lot of stuff over the network, including a neural net model that powers this this um, application that's several tens of megabytes, and then a whole lot of musical samples as well, which will then be done, be used to sequence the music. So it, it starts by downloading a whole bunch of stuff, basically. A whole bunch. It's about 10 megabytes, you say? It's, it's more than that. The model itself alone, I think, is around 20 or so. It's kind of a heavy, heavy model. But then on top of that, there's... All the music we're going to hear is kind of based on, on individual samples of, of, of notes, which are little MP3 files, and, and those are loaded at the loading phase as well. Okay. So now it's asking me to pick my... Oh, let's listen to some stuff. Mm. So, so what is that? Essentially, essentially a loop of music, a one, one so-called bar of music, uh, that's um, looping around as long as you, you care to listen. And it comes from this neural network model. It's, it's essentially a, a neural net that knows all there is to know about single bars of multi-tracked music. So it's several instruments and percussion playing uh, over and over again a single bar of music. So each spinner, so to speak, represents a single kind of musical loop. And every time I've started up this, this demo, I've seen a different loop. So you're telling me that these are automatically generated by your application, that's right? Yes, that's right. So they are, yeah, they are sampled from a latent space is the technical term. They, they come from, come from this, this neural net model. And, and yes, uh, I kind of start by randomly picking different uh, points from that, that model on this, this uh, screen here. But you can use the refresh button to, to replace either of these if you don't like, like it. I mean, there's a little refresh button on the middle of, of each spinner. Okay. So I pick a seed spinner. How do I pick one? Um, you can either choose to keep these ones or you can click the little refresh button at the, ah, in the middle to uh, replace one. So you can kind of, it's basically a little game of lottery. You can click okay. refresh as many times as you find one that you really like. Oh, I see. Okay, let's listen to this one. I like that. Hmm. I'm going to refresh that one. Mm -hmm. So now it's going, went to the neural network and found a slightly more boring one. I think this is just a oh, really? Is this it? <laughs> single note there that will just play, right? Okay, there. let's try this one. <laughs> oh, this there. looks interesting. Maybe one more, one more refresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this is good. A bit more energy than that one. Yeah, that's a good one. So here we go. So this looks really good. I want to I play this now. So I want to click play. Cool. All right. So now it'll start now. doing a whole lot of generation. It takes essentially those two 
spinners, so-called seed spinners here, it will generate a kind of two-dimensional field of, of music based on that, using, using that neural net model. And once it's yeah. done, it'll visualize that for you. Oh. So that's a seven by seven grid of these spinners now. And each one is, a, is its own musical loop. And what it's now kind of demoing for you is that you can actually move around in this, in this grid. So you can use your, your mouse or your arrow keys to kind of jump between these, these spinners. So it's used those loops as a seed. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so each of, and then it's created the other ones based off of that seed. So I presume they're all kind exactly. of related or modified from this seed in a, in a kind of a predictable way or something, right? Or That's exactly the case, yeah. So, so what each horizontal line on this grid, you can, you can, by the way, zoom out if you want to see more of it at oh, the same time. How do I zoom out? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, oh. exactly. Uh, so each, each kind of horizontal line in this grid mm -hmm. is a so-called interpolation between those two musical spinners. So the left side is the left seed and the right side is the right seed. And then everything in between is kind of an intermediate point while you morph from one to the next. So, oh. so it's kind of a, each, each step horizontally is supposed to be kind of a smooth uh, little step from one pattern to the next while you get further and further away from your origin, origin points. So if I go left here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's very... So oh. the, le the left edge, it should be fairly close to your original left side seat. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh. This, this is one of the things that is, is, this, is done by this model is, is, for example, you can take two mus pieces of music, musical measures, mm. and find the path between them. Like oh. Move apart between them and kind of interpolate between those and kind of and that makes for kind of an interesting way to also think about music in terms of if there's a geometric space kind of where there's one point here, one point here. If you walk that path mm. between those points, what do what is there between them? And okay, so they're literally like points in a in a in a high in a a big dimensional space, and you're just like navigating from one to the other. Exactly, it's. Uh, ah. 256 dimensional space the wow. model of music. Which, wow. A lot of dimensions, but it's still a lot less than, than, than kind of in, in the real world. So it's kind of yeah. still, still doable. Wow, still this doable. is beautiful. Now, now, yeah, this is, it's a, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so this is all using, so let's, 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 uh, how do I, how do I exit this? Just go back or? You can go back, yeah. I'll just close it. For sure. Yeah. I'll just close it. So that's beautiful. Um, yeah. It's really, really nice. I think visually beautiful and all, like auditorially. I don't know if that's the word. Um, beautiful as well. Um, let's like let's just spend a few minutes now, maybe talking a little bit about. Well, actually, no. Let me ask the first question. What what gave the inspiration to 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 make this application? Like what? Yeah. Um. This one, I believe it's, it's, it's the case of just looking at what the Magenta team is coming out with. They put out this, these new models all the time. And this, this particular one was, was this music VAE multi-track model. And, and then seeing, okay, what, what does that model actually do? Mm -hmm. And then figuring out how might a human being interact with the capabilities provided by the model and how could you explore the music that's contained within it in a kind of mm -hmm. interesting way. And that's, that's where it usually start, starts from in many of these experiments for me. I don't really plan it out very, very much in detail. I just start hacking yeah. and see what, what I think, transpires. I think, that's, I think that's what's so exciting about, um, personally, I think that's what's so exciting about this space from um, kind of a front-end JavaScript developer's perspective because we're, we're seeing all these amazing little opportunities and tools and libraries and I think our world is, mm. we might not have created the models, but I think we're some, we're some really creative people. And what I'm seeing people create creatively 
based off of that mm. is what's so exciting about the space the space for me right now is just such such an inspiring Definitely. broad range of things people are creating it's it's so yeah so inspirational so it's very inspirational yeah so let's talk a little bit seconds you mentioned magenta like we can actually look at the source code here that you've got in um sure. in the application i mean without kind of digging too too deep into it kind of yeah what what's involved i mean so there's a lot of code here involved it's a lot of code yeah yeah and it's yeah there's no excuse for there being that much code i just that's just an artifact of me improvising when i'm coding and not really thinking ahead at all i kind of mm. get to do that in these hobby projects where i kind of say i don't care i yeah. just see what happens but okay so there's there's a few i mean the the kind of actual core ai parts of this application is actually a very tiny nugget somewhere in there which is just calling a few methods from the magenta library to do this the vast yeah. majority of the whole application is about the visualization which is a 3js okay uh, 3JS, um, well, 3JS application, which then this, the, most of the code is about figuring out how those little spinners are visualized and how to calculate the different, different wings of them and how to morph between them and how to do all that. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, because it's got the visual side of things as well. Yes. Yeah, so you're using 3JS, you're using Tone, looks like you're using Tone. Yes. Uh, Tone.js as well, which I've heard of before, which actually plays sounds, is that right? Yes, yeah, so Tone.js is a um, library that is an abstraction on top of the web audio API, which may, adds a lot of good helper classes and things for making it easier to do music apps on top of the web audio API. So you can do things like these looping sequences. You can kind of easily give one of those to Tone and say, play this for me, and it will take care of the timings of that. and kind of calling all the web audio uh, methods at the right times and things like that. Okay. And uh, then also when I do the actual sounds that you hear that are, that are based on small MP3 files, mm -hmm. Tone has the code required to, to load those from the internet and decoding them and figuring out how to make those into web audio buffers. And it kind of abstracts away all the low-level web audio stuff mm -hmm. for me, so I can just concentrate on making the, the music application itself. And when I look at the script files here, I'm, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing. I'm actually not seeing TensorFlow or. Mm. Magenta being loaded up, where, where would they, those be loaded up, or how does that work? Magenta is, is there, the Magenta, Magenta Music JS, that's, uh, yeah, that's the actual ah. li library code itself, but, and that's the bundle, built bundle that they have, and that's the actual ah. source code. Okay. They, they bundle TensorFlow.js internally, so within right. that file, you, there will be a TensorFlow.js, but, but the thing about using the Magenta JS library is that, I'm oh, sorry, the, the thing about using the Magenta library is that you don't actually directly use TensorFlow. You, you kind of call the Magenta uh, methods for generating, say, a music sequence, and internally it will then figure out how to turn that into a tensor and do all that lower level yeah. stuff. So it kind of aims to abstract the way TensorFlow itself. So yeah, so it's, it's basically it's a, it's a level above uh, TensorFlow JS. It's purely Magenta. Describe Magenta JS for us. It's purely for music. Is that right? It's it's there's there's kind of two sides of it. There's music, and then there's this very new one, which is for for the so-called sketch RNN mm -hmm. model. It's kind of actually here. It's that's a visual model where which is about um, drawing sketch drawing. You mm -hmm. it'll. You can use that to generate continuations, basically for things that you draw on the screen. Mm. I haven't done anything with that yet, but I would love to, love to try that. Yeah. But Magenta, the Magenta group in general, is working in kind of in, is in the business of making AI models for art and music. So, okay. so they have these two two sides: visual arts and music. To what they do. Okay, fantastic. So, like. So if somebody wanted to get into this space, I mean, there's, 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 there's a lot involved here. Um, yeah. You know, we, 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 you, you mentioned that you can use Magenta JS, that we, well, obviously you can use TensorFlow if you wanted to. I'm using mm. ToneJS. Like, wh what advice would you give somebody who wanted to start playing around or trying to do something with AI and art and music and these mm. kinds of areas? I think... For a JavaScript developer to do that at the moment, possibly the easiest thing, or the thing I would do, would be to take any of these demos, for example, that are listed on this page, mm -hmm. which are open source and you know, they mm -hmm. are available, 
and start hacking, kind of making changes to it and kind of just uh, hacking it, in, making it your own. Mm. And the reason I'm saying that is because I, I haven't seen much in terms of tutorials or anything like that for this yet, just yet. It's so new still mm. that, that um, it's kind of hard to find the materials for learning it. So the best way to do it is to just dig in and, and just kind of break stuff and see, see what happens. That being said, I do have a plan writing something myself in the very near future. I'm doing some conference talks at the moment about the subject. And when I'm done with those, I will sit down and write some tutorials. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think, I think everybody, including me, to be honest with you, would very much love a couple of tutorials in this space. Um, I'd love that to be some too, because it's, it's all kind of the tech itself is within grasp and you actually can do a lot of this, this without actually knowing too much about deep learning or AI because these abstractions are, are pretty good. Yeah. It's just that, yeah, there isn't learning material just yet. And just, that's just because this has all come out in the past few months. Yeah. It's all new and it's all really exciting. And oh yeah. And yeah, it's all, it's all so just even the last few months of seeing what people have been making with this has just been really, really fantastic. And I'm really, I'm really looking forward to see what people come up with in the future. Me we're, too. So, we're so, we're so early days into this right now. Um, Very early, and it's yeah. It, there's yeah, there's going to be an explosion. Yeah. I think in, in the coming months and years of new kinds of creative apps, apps that are kind of finding new ways for machines and humans to collaborate together in new smart ways, and that's really exciting. It's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you. Thank you for having and, uh, me. And I hopefully maybe we can maybe we'll have another interview in the in the future when you create your next demo. I'm All right. Okay, cheers, thanks, bye. Thank you.